Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Exotic Astrology. And today we are going to continue with the Shiva Bhagavatam series. And we have reached the sixth verse of the first chapter of the first canto. Still a long way to go, but let's start nonetheless. And till now, we had seen that the sages of Nami Sharanya they have assembled, and Sud Goswami has also assembled there. And they just offered Sud Goswami a very elevated position because he was a great personality. And we saw in the last verse that anybody who is uh, speaking the Srimad Bhagavatam is like a representative of Vyasdev, and that is why he is very honorable, and that is why he is to be given an elevated seat. And therefore, now the sages of Nemisharanya, we will see in the this today's verse they will glorify Sudh Goswami and they will say why does he deserve to speak the Bhagavatam okay so it is not that just because he's from some fancy family or he's born in some Brahmin family or some high class or some high caste or some aristocratic family that he has been offered this uh, great elevated seat or it is not that because of uh, high birth or his connection to some royal king or some other great personality he has been given this uh, position so now in today's verse we will know what are the reasons why he has been uh, given this position and who should be given such respect okay so the point here is not to uh, judge people who is speaking that oh he's like this or she's like that does does he or she deserve to sit that's not the point of this video the point of this video is that when we follow great souls then we will also become very exemplary like them so if we know what their qualities are then we can also aspire to be like them so that is the only reason why this verse is there it is not to judge somebody that oh this person is like this this person has these qualities or this person may not have these qualities and now, Sud Goswami is a great personality, of course, and uh, it, it is not necessary that everybody who is speaking the Srimad Bhagavatam uh, or who is sitting in the Vyasasana is totally exemplary like him, 100%. That is not possible. But at the same time, uh, we can know that by uh, reading scriptures like the Bhagavatam, what kind of a transformation can come into our life. And by that, we can also remain happy and we can also elevate ourselves and we can obtain spiritual perfection at the end all right so there you go first canto first chapter sixth verse and before we start as we offer prayers to our preceptors om agyan timirandhasya gyananjana shlakaya chakshur unmilitam yena tasmai shri guru venama and it is good if we recite the prayer Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya also three times before we start any uh, verse of the Bhagavatam. Okay? Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Alright, so sixth verse of the first chapter. Rishai Uvacha Tvaya khalu puranani seithasani chanagaha akhyatyahi api adhitani dharma shastrani yanyuta. What does this mean? The translation is the sages said, Rishi, Rishayo uvacha. It's not Rishi, okay? The sages. Rishi means one. Rishaya means more. Many say, many Rishis. Rishai Vacha. So the, who are these Rishis? These are the Rishis who are sitting uh, in the Naimi Sharanya forest and they are about to listen from Sud Goswami. But before Sud Goswami speaks, these sages are glorifying him and they are praising him. And it's not some superficial praise or some uh, glorification. It's, it's very serious. The points mentioned here are very serious. The sages said, Respected Sud Goswami, you are completely free from all vice. You are well versed in all the scriptures famous for religious life. 
and in the puranas and the histories as well for you have gone through them under proper guidance and, and have also explained them point to be noted many points <laughs> you are completely free from all vices that is number one all right so if i use this a facility in my macbook to zoom over this word vice what does it indicate there are many meanings one of the meaning in this context is immoral or wicked activities so criminal activities involving prostitution pornography or drugs then another meaning is an immoral or wicked personal characteristic hypocrisy is a particular sinister vice then a weakness of character or behavior a bad habit cigars happen to be my father's vice example also stable vice a bad or neurotic habit of stabled horses typically arising as a result of boredom all right so these are the meanings that english dictionary is giving thanks to macbook all right so that's the first thing freedom from vice right what's the second you are well versed in all scriptures famous for religious life and in puranas you can include puranas in the scriptures only and histories as well all right three things for you have gone through them under proper guidance number 4 and 5 and you have also explained them so these are the five ways Or, or you can include history in the uh, in the scriptures also. So four ways, all right. So first way is to be free from vice. Second is to have knowledge of the scriptures. Third, you have gone through them under proper guidance, the most important thing. And fourth, you have also explained. So four ways to control difficulties or challenges in our life, inner challenges, all right. So now let us go to the purport. <clears throat> a goswami or the bona fide representative of shila vyasdev must be free from all kinds of vices so this word goswami we saw the meaning of this word goswami before in the previous verse hopefully goswami doesn't mean anybody uh, in india who is born with a surname goswami or a brahman or who is, who is born in a brahmin family that's not what the goswami here refers to here the word goswami refers to like go means the senses which means our eyes our nose our tongue our skin all right these are the senses karmendriyas gyanendriyas and swami means controller <clears throat> so the goswami means anybody who has complete control over the senses all right the opposite is godas godas means one who is under the control of the senses which means suppose there's a beautiful looking member of the opposite sex and then the eyes come to know oh hey look at that person now the eyes are dictating what do you do do you go and start staring at that person or you tell the eyes no 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 it's not proper to do like that keep your gaze gaze down what do you do well if you start staring then you are under the control you are a slave of the senses which means the mind which is at a higher position than the senses so first we have the senses then we have the mind then we have intelligence then we have false ego and then we have the soul so these are the levels right so that means the mind has become a slave of the senses because the mind is not experiencing anything higher any spiritual pleasure and because of that the senses are dictating and the mind is uh, like a helpless uh, creature the mind is also flowing with it all right so that means that is the situation of a godas das means slave or servant so go das means one who has zero control over the senses and goswami means one who has full control right one who is fully 
disciplined one who is fully aligned one who fully knows what he should do when he should do he or she anybody a goswami or the bona fide representative of shila vyas dev shila vyas dev <laughs> must be free from all kinds of vices the four primary vices of kali yuga are illicit connection with women animal slaughter intoxication speculative gambling of all sorts so what is the first one that is illicit sex and second one is meat eating animal slaughter third is intoxication and the fourth one is gambling so here illicit sex means having connection with the members of the opposite sex outside of marriage all right either before or within marriage with somebody else indulging physically with somebody then second one is uh, animal slaughter and yes many times people say that oh i i have not indulged uh, physically with anybody but uh, i just watch pornography and other stuff so all these things are covered in illicit sex okay the second one is animal slaughter eating animals for the taste of your tongue which means you are a slave of your tongue whatever your tongue dictates you do that illicit sex means whatever your genitals are dictating you are following like a helpless person you you have no control and third is intoxication yes intoxication smoking drinking prostitution anything any intoxication then speculation gambling of all sorts so gambling is the word and mahabharata is the biggest mahabharata is the biggest example how disastrous gambling can be a goswami must be free from all these vices before he can dare sit on the vyasasan my god very heavy statement a goswami must be free from all these vices before he can dare sit on the vyasasan my god very heavy statement no one should be allowed to sit on the vyasasan who is not spotless in character and who is not freed from the above mentioned vices he not only should be freed from all such vices but he must also be well versed in all revealed scriptures or in the vedas there you go number 2 he must be he must be free from the vices but just being free from the vices is not enough what is the second requirement the second requirement is he must also be well versed in all revealed scriptures or in the veda so this does not mean in a literal sense that uh, that person should be uh, very eloquent in sanskrit or english or hindi or anything like that or should know a thousand shlokas or a million uh, stories it doesn't mean that what does it mean so if you read the statement very carefully well versed in all revealed scriptures okay now the word revealed means the ultimate essence is known all right so this person should know all the the ultimate essence of the scriptures so for example what is the <clears throat> what is the essence of the bhagavad gita yes i have the bhagavad gita playlist also if you have not watched the videos please go and watch it so in the bhagavad gita what 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 is the ultimate essence what is the goal what is the conclusion many times you will see people will read so many uh, holy texts or scriptures or so many uh, books from so many places from so many traditions but the problem is there's no conclusion which they find so this means that the person has studied but uh, or even if they know the conclusion they don't know what how to apply it in my life personally or how to benefit from them benefit means uh, not at a financial sense but how to improve my life you know just by reading or just by memorizing shlokas it doesn't work like that you have to be aware of the conclusions and you also have to know how to practically apply them in my life who can help me to understand myself better how i can uh, apply these principles as per desh kal patra time place circumstances so for example as i said uh, the gita has 700 shlokas and every shloka is divine of course but the conclusion is that krishna uh, arjuna surrenders to krishna uh, krishna sir and then krishna says sarva dharman pratyaja mam ekam sharanam raja 
अहम तम सर्व पापे भ्यो मोक्ष श्यामी मासु छा दैट इज वॉट कृष्णा टेल्स टू अर्जुना अल्टीमेटली एंड देन मेनी पीपल से दैट ओ एक्चुअली इन द गीता कृष्णा जस्ट सेड समथिंग एंड देन अर्जुना एग्री टू फॉलो हिम बट वॉट इफ आई डोंट एग्री टू फॉलो all right so that's not the right attitude of the gita because if you read in the gita arjuna also says nashto moha smriti labdhva tat prasadan maya chuta sthito smi gata sandeha karishye vachanam tavaha arjuna says nashto moha smriti labdhva which means moha nashta means destroyed moha means illusion my illusion is destroyed okay smriti labdhva all my memory and all the baggage which i have is now is now destroyed sthitosmi gata sandeha all my sandeha all my doubts have been dispelled and i have become sthita sthita means uh, equipoised um, sthitosmi gata sandeha karishye vachanam tava karishye means to do vachanam speech and tava means you so i will do whatever you have said all right and krishna told arjuna that get up and fight and then arjuna started fighting and yeah in between i forgot the nashto moha smriti labdho tat prasadan maya chuta tat prasadan means the prasad which you have given me tat prasadan maya me achuta means it's referring to krishna so tat prasada generally prasad means people think it's some food but uh, spiritual knowledge is also prasad it's the biggest form of prasad okay so Arjuna says at the end that yes, now I have understood what you have said, and now I will do what you have said. So it is not that we read the Gita and Krishna has spoken something and we just disappear after some time. So that's not how the Gita should be read, including the Bhagavatam also. So this means that this is the meaning when you say that uh, the person is realized or right, in the scripture. So therefore. one should know the conclusion because just by knowing a thousand verses from ramayan from shvetashvatara upanishad from you know katham chandogya upanishad from this veda from that veda that 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 does nothing actually right in fact sometimes it can lead you more into confusion what's going on we don't know there you go then the puranas are also parts of the vedas there are 18 puranas as we know six of them are in are written for the people who are in tamoguna mode of ignorance six of them for those who are in rajoguna mode of passion and six of them are written for those who are in the mode of goodness the puranas are also parts of the vedas okay So many times people say, "Oh, Vedas are the supreme. We don't need Puranas. That's sheer nonsense. You need both." And histories like Mahabharata or Ramayana are also parts of the Vedas. So these are itihasas, or like itihas means history. Ramayana and Mahabharata, especially. The Acharya or the Goswami must be well acquainted with all these literatures. to hear and explain them is more important than reading them should i repeat to hear and explain them is more important than reading them so many times uh, people tell me that uh, half an hour a day i read the gita one hour a day sometimes one and half hour some people also read for two hours but i tell them that instead of reading for 2 hours you read for 1 hour and explain it to somebody else by that you are uh, elevating somebody else you are uplifting somebody else you are benefiting somebody else also right so that is a form of charity which we can do uh, sharing this knowledge with others because krishna also says the one who does this is very dear to me if you know the verse where he says this then write it in the comments to hear and explain them is more important than reading them this does not mean you don't read because if you don't read you will not know what's going on so then you don't know what to explain okay one can assimilate the knowledge of the revealed scriptures only by hearing and explaining because when you are uh, hearing you are hearing but sometimes your mind <laughs> your mind may be in a dream land in some other fantasy land all right but when you are explaining you are speaking even that time your mind can go to a fantasy land but you need to have more control over your uh, words all right so 
therefore hearing is the first thing and second thing is you speak hearing is called shravana and explaining is called kirtana shravanam kirtanam vishnu that famous shloka is there pralad maharaj says in the seventh canto of the shrimad bhagavatam seventh canto hopefully <laughs> The two processes of Shravan and Kirtan are of primary importance to progressive spiritual life. Two main processes, hearing and chanting. And here Kirtan generally, the word Kirtan means, you know, some uh, singing some bhajans or singing the names of God. But uh, Kirtan, what is the meaning of the word Kirtan? Kirtana means Kirti. Kirti means, um, Kirti means glories, greatness. So to uh, spread the glories of somebody. So Kirtana means to spread the glories of God. So that can be through by uh, through chanting his name or it can be through uh, talking about the Gita or the Bhagavatam. That is also Kirtan actually. Or singing bhajans, either of the three. The two processes of Shravan and Kirtan are of primary importance to progressive spiritual life. So these two are the most important processes. These two, they are the backbone of your spiritual life. Only one who has properly grasped the transcendental knowledge from the right source by submissive hearing can properly explain the subject. Only one who has properly grasped the transcendental knowledge from the right source See, three things are there. One who has gra properly grasped the, the transcendental knowledge from the right source by submissive hearing. This is like a hammer which we need to keep hitting on ourselves. Can properly explain the subject. So, just by grasping the transcendental knowledge, it will not happen. You have to grasp it from a right source. And just by grasping from the right source, also it will not happen. You have to do it submissively like Arjuna did, all right? One who does this can properly explain the subject. So then, so transcendental knowledge is there, then the right source will give you the uh, right, uh, the right met the right process, all right? And then submissive hearing will give you the right attitude. So knowledge, process and attitude, three things are very important. Without this three, spiritual life doesn't exist. So spiritual life means to have knowledge and then to know the process and then to have the right attitude which comes with humility. So submissive hearing is very much stressed here, can properly explain the subject. So many times we may find people who are talking uh, big things on spirituality. But if they are lacking these three things, all right, then we know that their knowledge cannot benefit us. And the point here is not to uh, sit and judge who is saying what, who is doing what. These are for ourselves. This is for us, for nobody else. So this means we should, uh, we should try to get transcendental knowledge from the right source, from the parampara and by submissive hearing. Only then we can benefit others, all right? And benefit ourselves first because this is charity begins at home, all right? So just to revise, the four vices, meat eating, then intoxication, then gambling, and then illicit sex. So a Goswami must be free from all this. And the Goswami should also be aware and well-versed in the scriptures and the Vedas, the Puranas, Upanishads are not mentioned here, of course. Ramayana and the Mahabharata. And he should not only hear, he should also explain it to others. And hearing and chanting, these are the backbone, backbone uh, processes of spiritual life. Without that, these two activities, spiritual life doesn't exist. And one who has properly grasped the knowledge from the right source by submissive hearing can properly explain the subject. So, uh, knowledge, process and the third one attitude <laughs> so knowledge process and attitude these three are very important all right so this is how we can transform our lives and we can control our senses if we do reading properly and we do hearing properly and we listen from other goswamis then we can 
benefit ourselves and we can also become a Goswami and we can also control our senses all right so that is it from my side if you like this video click the thumbs up and share it with somebody who wants to know how to control your sen their senses and if you want a consultation from me, then please go down to the description section where you will find the link to my website to book a reading with me personally. And yes, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and don't just look. You listen and speak also. Only then you will find him. Okay. Thank you so much. Wish you all the best.